All right, friends, the build show today, I'm gonna make the case for dehumidifiers. That's right, we're talking HVAC plus D. Today's build show is sponsored by Brown. Let's get going. Okay guys, so here's the deal. This video is intended for you as builders, but I could see you also forwarding this video to your clients. I really wanna make the case for why you want to add potentially a dehumidifier, a whole house dehumidifier, not the kind that I had as a kid, which kind of plugged in in the basement and my parents would use to keep my basement from feeling musty or smelling musty. This guy right here is intended to actually keep the humidity in the house lower year round and it's ducted, so it's part of our HVAC system, but it's different. Here's the deal. The HVAC system, the heating and air conditioning, is done on this house right here. And this box works awesome. We kick down the thermostat if we're hot, we turn it up when we're cold, and this box does that. Now the V is, stands for ventilation, and in this house we've got a Brown AI series ERV, Energy Recovery Ventilator, which is an awesome device, which is gonna bring in fresh air for us. And it's gonna bring in that air at a slightly lower humidity, but this is not a dehumidifier. And in fact, this will raise your humidity in your house if it's humid outside. So that's why, or that's part of the reason why, we want this separate unit that all it's doing is handling humidity in the house. It's controlling that through a dehumidistat on the wall that you're gonna set somewhere between, let's say 40 and 60%, and it's only gonna run when that humidity kicks up. Now, new construction houses like this, we've got good insulation, we've got a bunch of good rock hole in the walls, we've got zip bar insulation, got a pretty tight uh, airflow between the outside and the inside. This HVAC system is really only going to need to run when it gets above 80 or so outside. And in July, this is going to run a lot. We've got a lot of load in the house. But what happens in what's known as the shoulder seasons? For me in Texas, that's spring and fall. That may be other times for you in other parts of the country. What happens is we end up kicking down our thermostat because we're uncomfortable. It starts to feel muggy in the house, but it's not so much the temperature, it's that humidity that's been elevated, especially when you have more people in the house, that's more showering, that's more cooking, that's more breathing, which is elevating that humidity. If you've got an ERV or if you don't have an ERV, let's say, and you just have a fresh air input, like kind of like this, except this is a makeup air for this house, that means that your house is gonna have a potentially higher humidity. If it's 80 degrees outside, that temperature is not particularly hot, but what if it's 70% humidity outside? When you go outside, it feels muggy, and that's not very fun. On the other hand, if you're using just your air conditioner to control humidity, sometimes it can feel clammy. That's the feeling of like, it's cold, but it's still humid. Now, when I married my Texas wife, when we were dating, this is in the 90s, I thought it was so weird. I grew up in Pennsylvania. My Texas wife would always take a sweater with her in July when we'd go on a date. We'd go to the movie theaters or the restaurants. That's because movie theaters and restaurants, all they've got to control comfort is a thermostat. But this house has a dehumidistat and a thermostat. At my house now, I often keep the thermostat at maybe 74 or 75 degrees because I'm using a dehumidifier. And that dehumidifier, I keep set at about 45% relative humidity year round. It kicks on when it needs to, and then I'm just using a thermostat for that little bit of comfort one way or another that I needed, either heating or cooling. The dehumidifier does an amazing job for me. Now there's some other benefits though to that lower humidity. Mold growth is gonna be low in your house. Typically mold and viruses and bacteria not viruses, bacteria, need to be above 60% relative humidity. So if we can keep that relative humidity in the, in the house lower, we're gonna have less of that. My towels are gonna dry faster. My showers are gonna dry out quicker in between showering. I'm not gonna have as much incidental mold growth around the house, which is good for my indoor air quality. If it gets below 30% humidity, that can be too dry for us. So really 30 to 60 is that ideal humidity. We don't need a humidifier here down in the south, but you might if you're watching this up in the north. Last thing I want to mention about these dehumidifiers, uh, this Brown model right here is a smaller 70H model, one of their smallest, if not the smallest unit they make. 
still has good MERV 13 filtration. So when it's running, it's really filtering out those fine particles out of the air and keeping that air cleaner and healthier for us. Now this house is a two-story house. Anytime we see two-story houses, I like to have two smaller units. So we've got one here and I've got one in the upper attic serving the upstairs. If you had a single story house and it's pretty open on that, that first story, you could get away with one model for sure. But if, if you're thinking about a two story house, I often like to have two dehumidifiers. And trust me, the comfort is absolutely worth it. But this is a benefit to your health and ultimately a little bit of an energy efficiency benefit. We'll close on this thought. You know, when this uh, HVAC system's running, we've got a big compressor outside. It's drawing a fair amount of amps when it runs. But this thing, on the other hand, this particular model is a smaller unit. It's only like five point something amps when it's running. So if I can keep my humidity lower running this smaller appliance and I keep my temperature, let's say, higher because I'm comfortable at 72 or 73 or 74 or 75, this unit's running less and this unit uses more electricity when it's running. Guys, big thanks to Brone for sponsoring today's video. Hopefully you learned something. And I can tell you over the years, uh, as I've moved to making these units optional for my clients, now they're just part of my budgets. My houses are super comfortable. This is totally the way to go. And if you're watching this and you're a homeowner, I highly recommend you tell your builder that you're interested in one of these. Almost everywhere that you might be watching this in North America, a whole house dehumidifier can be a benefit to you. If you want to learn more about Brone and these particular units, there'll be a website link in the description below. And lastly, I would mention that anytime you look at any dehumidifiers uh, manufacturer's website, they're going to have a range of square footages that that dehumidifier might work for. But those are knowing that manufacturer has somebody who's in a 1970s house that might be leaky or maybe a new construction. That's why there's all these crazy ranges on there. Ultimately, you really want to talk to uh, an HVAC professional who can help you size that and determine if you need one or if it's better to put two in your house as well. Guys, if you're not currently a subscriber, hit that subscribe button below. We've got new content here every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow us on TikTok or Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show. Big shout out to my friends at New Results HVAC who did this gorgeous uh, mechanical room right here. They installed all this equipment. We've got a Mitsubishi here. We've got an April Air with a really good MERV 15 filter in it. We've got a Brone AI series ERV, and this is the Brone 70H. We've got two of these to dehumidify this house. Uh, Nacho and the team just did an absolute top-notch install here.